so many more people are getting Alzheimer's. And so what are some of the early symptoms that people might be experiencing? I mean, even in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, leading up to obviously, you know, cognitive decline and then eventually Alzheimer's. This is a great point. And, you know, uh, it's unfortunate we're, we're, because there has been nothing to do about it. People keep reassuring you and saying it's probably not Alzheimer's. It's probably not Alzheimer's, which is the opposite. Everything in this field has been backward. Assume that it's not. Don't do, you know, do small data sets. Uh, give a drug instead of looking at all the different things. So this has really been a pretty backward field for a while, unfortunately. So you're right. What happens is we begin to get these changes and people will tell, oh, you know, it's just you're just getting a little older. Um, and unfortunately, with, as you know, many 20-somethings are already uh, insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. They've already got ongoing uh, inflammation, whether it's from you know, oral uh, microbiome or from leaky gut. And this is so common now. These are setups for down the road what is going to become Alzheimer's. And I should mention, as an aside, the big problem here is Alzheimer's occurs in four stages. And the problem is that we physicians focus on the last stage when we should be focusing on the first stage. Yeah. So stage one, you have a period um, for several years where you are asymptomatic. You have no symptoms, but you can already show changes in PET scans and spinal fluid. Now we're getting better blood tests. So people will be able to check this even in their 20s and 30s when these are things are just beginning to change. Second stage is called SCI, subjective cognitive impairment. And the epidemiologists have shown that lasts about 10 years. You know that there's something wrong, but you're still able to test in the normal range on your cognitive testing. And so that's really when you want to jump in. And we see virtually 100% of the people who have SCI, we can return to complete normalcy. They do very, very well. But again, you don't go in at that time. The third stage is called MCI. We hear about this a lot, mild cognitive impairment. Very unfortunate term because it's just like telling someone, don't worry, you only have mildly metastatic cancer. That's really what this is. This is a relatively late stage. And the, by the definition of that is now you're scoring imperfectly on your cognitive tests suboptimally, but you are now continuing to have your activities of daily living. You've preserved those. Then the fourth and final stage is what we call Alzheimer's disease, where there's now dementia. And now those people have impacted their activities of daily living. And so that's the that's when most people will then seek out a med, you know, seek out medical care. I just had an example just a couple of weeks ago, a guy who's a physician himself, who really was in that fourth stage already, went into his doctor and his doctor said, Oh yeah, don't worry. This is just normal aging. This is what to expect. Oh my gosh. This is so misguided. This guy had already gone through stage one, two, and three and was already into the fourth stage. And by the way, turned out to have normal pressure hydrocephalus as well as Alzheimer's disease, which had never been mm. uh, never been checked and recognized. So it is critical. As people know, it, you know, as you and I know, you start knowing that something is not right with your brain. You need to get evaluated because there are a lot of things you can do to optimize it. And we're seeing it now with brain fog in COVID-19. So many people come away with brain fog. So, so the, this is the, the basically the way you see this. And the, as you mentioned, the presentation, it comes in two groups. About two-thirds of people will have am, an am, amnestic presentation. They can't learn new information. They remember who their first, they may remember who their first grade teacher was, but they don't remember what they had for dinner last night. They don't remember where they put their keys, those sorts of things. About one third of people will present with a non-amnestic presentation. And those are problems with organizing, so executive dysfunction, problems with, uh, with recognition of faces, prosopagnosia, problem with recognition of objects, problems with word finding, so-called primary progressive aphasia, um, and, and then uh, various other things that are like, for example, dyscalculia, things that are more parietal lobe symptoms instead of the amnestic presentation, which is more of a temporal lobe presentation. And those ones that have the non-amnestic presentations are at risk for, for having a toxin-associated cognitive decline. So we want to look especially carefully at the non-amnestics for toxin association. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I know like some early symptoms, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, if you're dealing with brain fog, 
for yep. common forgetfulness. You can't remember where your keys are, your phone. If this is happening commonly, then yep. that could be symptoms. Sleep disorders are really big. Uh, if you're yep. not sleeping through the night effectively, anxiety, depression, all of those things, can not they're all signs that your brain is inflamed. And exactly. uh, obviously, we've got to get to the root cause there. Otherwise, over time, that inflammation is just going to burn down the brain. And then eventually, the body's going to do what it needs to do to try to repair, which is put in these amyloid plaques. Right. And, uh, you know, that's by, you know, by that time, like you said, it's like 20, 30 year process. That's when you finally get mild cognitive decline and then eventually uh, full blown Alzheimer's.